Chapter 8, Hypothesis Testing. So when we're doing hypothesis testing, we're looking at um, a claim where the company is saying the uh, mean um, weight of a Coke can is 12 ounces. There, There's 10 ounces of cereal. You know, we're looking at the length of a screw is 3 quarters of an inch. We're looking at an informa piece of information. That's going to be our H0. Then we have our alternative that it is not true. So this is what we're looking at. And what are we, what are they asking us? And we're gonna have our null hypothesis, which is always gonna have an equal sign. It may be greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or equal to, and that depends on will tell us whether we have one or two tails. But the null hypothesis always has an equal sign. So it's either the proportion equals something or the mean equals mu equals something, but it's always gonna have an equal sign. And therefore the alternative hypothesis we'll have whatever's left, less than, greater than, or not equal to. So if we have the null is greater than or equal to, the, op or the alternative is less than. If it's less than or equal to, it's going to be greater than. If it's just equals, it's going to be not equals, which means less than or greater than. So, and our claims must all, we're, we're going to have our claims try to be our alternative hypotheses, because this is what we're trying to prove. Um, well, yeah, we're trying to we're trying to disprove the opposite, so therefore we can therefore, you know, assume that this has some validity. So our first step is we're going to have to choose our appropriate test statistic. You know, are we using a z-test of proportions, where we have p hats and we use our square root of uh, p over pq over n? Are we doing a z-test, which means that we know the standard deviation, population standard deviation, and again? we're using the square root of n because we're looking at x bars. Are we using a t-test because we don't know the standard deviation of the population? And or are we going to do a confidence interval? And a confidence interval is because it's a quick test. We have a one we have a two-tailed um, test. We use a confidence interval of 1 minus alpha. Oops. And if we have a one-tailed test, we have a confidence interval of the should be 1 minus 2 alpha. There should be an alpha there. I'll have to fix that. So we assess our test statistic. We have to figure out what our critical regions are. Are we going to do a significance level? What is our critical values and our p-value? And it's always best to draw this out, determine whether we have a one- or two-tailed test. Where is our mean? Where are our critical values? Where is our rejection regions? And then, do we have a two-tail test? You know, or do we have a left or right tail test? We're going to draw these things out on our charts. And I'll show it to you what it looks like um, you know, Saturday. So, um, Our decisions and conclusions. So when we're done with our test, we have to either reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. We don't ever prove the null hypothesis. We just fail to reject it. And because it may still be incorrect. We're only 95% sure or 99% sure uh, that this didn't work. We're never 100%, so we can't prove the null. Um, if we, re we reject the null hypothesis, if the test statistic falls in the critical region, so if we are using uh, z-scores does it fall in our critical areas? Um, we use if we're using our p-value. Does our p-value less than alpha? Or if we're doing the confidence interval, is the claimed mean not included in our confidence interval? Um, we fail to reject if our p-value is greater than alpha. Our test statistic doesn't fall in the critical region, so it falls within the not re do not reject area. So it's going to be less than z. Uh, or our claim to mean is included in our confidence interval. And our conclusion, there is or isn't significant evidence to reject the claim that blah 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 blah. So we never notice, I'm not saying we've proven. We are not accepting it. We are just rejecting or not rejecting the null hypothesis. We never accept the claim. We either reject the null or fail to reject the null. So I'm going to show you how to do this on a computer and, and with the calculator, but it's really just calculating z-scores. You know, there's nothing left to do. 
um, with that. So it's a very and once because we can count, we know how to do z statistics or t statistics or confidence intervals. We've already know how to do a um, hypothesis test. The important thing is to draw it out and figure out where our conclusions are. The you know what is our null hypothesis and what is our um, alternative. Those are the two big pieces. Once, but the rest of it is stuff we've already done. So there's really no new mathematics for you to learn. It's just now applying the things that we just did. So I will show you those in a, uh, next. I will make another video and.